Right, so it's probably about time to uh, wire this up. You're supposed to use an anti-static wristband for doing this, but I must have, well I've been doing this for a year, you know, on, on YouTube, and um, I must have handled maybe a hundred chips, something like that. And uh, I've not used an anti-static wristband, and I've only ever broken one chip, and that was in the MCP 3008, uh, which is, um, I think it's an ADC actually. Anyway, so let's put this in. Um, zoom in a bit so you can see it properly. There we go. Right now, according to the um, the documentation, this is the pinout. In fact, I'll just uh, can this go in as well at the same time. Oh, there we go. That's handy, isn't it? Let's just zoom out a touch. That's a bit easier, isn't it? So um, I'll just put the nano in as well. Put the nano over here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can just about. So the nano is in there, on the chips there. Now you can see the little uh, the little dot that indicates top left, okay? And the the pins go round from uh, top left to bottom left to bottom right to top right. That's the way it works. Bit weird, but you know whatever. Okay, so it's about time to wire this up now. So the first one, which is A zero pin one, goes to ground. Okay, and the second pin, which is A1, also goes to ground. It doesn't actually have to go to ground, but I want it to go to ground because these three pins here form the address. So A2, which is pin 3, also goes to ground. And VSS, I'm not quite sure why they come up with these, um, I don't know, these notations VSS, but it means ground anyway. So pin 4. VSS which is ground. So that's that side done. Then over to this side. VCC uh, is obviously plus the voltage so I'll use a red one for that. VCC to 5 volts. There we go. And WP is write protect and I don't want it to write protect. Uh, so I assume that's pulled low so ground Uh, SCL, which is an I squared C uh, notation, so SCL will go to A5 and SDA, which is serial data, so serial clock and serial data, that goes to A4. Okay, so it's wired up and I think it's time to plug it in. This is not too dissimilar from uh, RAM and SSDs and stuff like that. So it's a really uh, good thing to be able to understand um, because this is essentially how computers store data. Anyway, so let's get on with it. Um, so the first thing we'll need to do is over here, uh, let's tidy this up to start with. So we don't need that and we don't need that. So what are we going to do now? We need to set up serial. So serial dot begin one one five two hundred is what I usually use. Um, and what's next? We need to uh, we need wire begin wire dot begin and wire begin uh, sets up uh, I squared C uh, the I squared C protocol, and it's a library which allows allows us to um, interact with it let's go to the right method so we want it to void let's say right to um, now we're going to need some variables we're going to need to know the address of the chip so uh, that's going to be an integer or integer or whatever you want to call it uh, let's call this ch address chip address ch address and then we need the cell address. I don't know if it's actually called cell, but that's what I'm calling it. Uh, an area in the uh, chip which you want to save or read data to or from. So I'm going to call it cell address. Um, so let's say cell address. Um, and we need byte, which is going to represent the, di the data that we want to write. So W data, which stands for write data. Um, oh, I missed a, an in from there. Int. Um, 
probably on yeah on signed int then byte data and that's good for there so just tidy this up control t control s and what do you want to do in here we want wire dot begin uh, transmission and that's going to the chip address so we're about to transmit to the chip and we want wire dot write um, an integer so that's a bit of casting and then we want uh, the cell address right now I'll explain this in a second and we want to copy that the reason we're doing this is because the address is formed by sending two um, two bytes to it so anyway we need to change this that's got to be and uh, 0 x f f which is 255 or 256 depending on how you want to look at it um, and then we want to end the transmission wire end transmission end transmission and that doesn't need an address so it shouldn't do okay so let's move on with the sketch now so what have we done up to now wire begin uh, right so we've um, we've got the chip address and we've got the address which we want to uh, write the data to so uh, there's actually something else we need to do we need to of course write the data so wire dot write the data so we begin a transmission with the with the chip and then we write the two parts of the address which you want to save the data to and then we say wire dot write which tells i squared c or the device to write that byte of data into that cell and then we end the transmission there and we probably need a delay so we'll have a delay of I don't know a millisecond probably okay the next thing we need to do is um, make a method to read from uh, the chip so void oh, actually no it won't be void it'll be byte read from the chip and here we want the chip address and we want the uh, in fact it's the same as this chip address and we want the cell address too and that's all we need for that so let's move this up again and uh, control T control S and what do we want to do here? Well, it's another transmission, so we we can copy this. Although, let's take that out for now. So, begin the transmission. So, we want to read this time. So, um, basically, this is talking to the chip. So, begin the transmission with the chip. Write to the address which we want to read from to specify what we want to read from. And then, what we need to do is we need to request from so wire dot request from and we want to request from the chip address or the chip or whatever you want to call it and we want to read um, one byte right so there we need to just return uh, return the byte now so uh, let's say byte read data equals anything for now um, do we want it to be zero? I guess so and then if is data available so if wire dot available if wire available then oops control T control and S again there then our data equals wire dot read. Oops, wire dot read to read the data into the variable. So, right now, what do you want to do now? We want to return 
our data. Right. And now it's just a case of using these methods now. So in the loop, or we don't want to do anything in the loop, but we'll all write something to to start with. So when we set up, we want to write to um right. Hang on a sec, we want to write to what's happened here? There's actually no point in writing to anything at the moment because we haven't defined some necessary stuff. We actually need to include um, wire dot h and what else do we need to do? We need to define this chip address which in this case is 80 and yeah, I'll try and explain why that's 80. Now to start with, when I first did this, I couldn't get it working. And the reason I couldn't get it working is because I was using zero. And the reason I was using zero is because I set the address, the A0, A1 and A2 pins, all to low. So I assumed the address would be 0, 0, 0. But I forgot about something, and I'll just try and demonstrate this now using this calculator. I forgot that the it was a start of the address and the start of the address is always one zero one zero and then it's zero 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 which if you look over here is decimal 80 so that's why it's 80 anyway um, what's next so we need the um, what do we need we need to write to we need to write to the chip address um, then we need to give it the cell address, I've written CE here, so we need cell address and we need a variable for that, so it will be unsigned. Unsigned means it's a positive number. Cell address, and it's ne never negative, a single number, uh, I don't know, 96. So write to cell 96, so write to chip address and the cell address and then what do we want to write I suppose we'll write one two one two eight okay and then control T control S so this will obviously write to it and now we need to read from it so read from and again we want the chip address we want to give it the cell address that we want to read from Okay, and of course we need to encase that in something, so serial dot write, or serial print actually, serial print, uh, whatever comes from that method, and we want it in decimal. Control T, Control S. Right, so that should be everything. So let's Control and R to make sure. Um, control and R compiles the sketch. Um, I actually use a lot of these shortcut keys, um, particularly in Arduino Studio because I feel like it makes things a hell of a lot faster. So I usually do Control T, Control S, Control R, Control U uploads. Um, a bit easier than using these, I suppose. Ah, okay. Um, I found out why it wouldn't why it wouldn't work. It's because of the delay. Uh, one millisecond delay isn't enough. It needs to have more. I've put in ten millisecond delay, and now it works. So let's have a look at what we're doing here. So we're specifying the chip address. That's in case you have more than one chip. And specifying the cell address, which could be from uh, maybe zero, but I'm not sure, to eight thousand. And again, it may be slightly different. It could be like one to eight thousand one hundred. I don't know, but it's something like that and um, we're writing to the um, cell and then we're reading from the same cell which would have 128 written to it in this case and there we go so and there's all the workings there so now if I change the address to I don't know let's say 32 and we'll write um, right let's write something a bit weird let's write uh, 49 and then re-upload and let's see what it does so of course what it should be doing is it should find the chip and then it should find the address 
then it should write 49 to the address and then it should read back from the address what we've just written to it. So we'll do this first, see what happens, and then we'll go a step further and test it even more. So control shift M and it says 49, so that's really good. So we can write to different addresses with different values. Um, but there's something really cool. This is an EEPROM and what it means is that you know you can disconnect it and it will still work so what I'm going to do I'm going to take off the write to so we're not going to write to it anymore because in the setup you can see that's what it does it writes and it reads so we're not going to write to it anymore we're just going to read it from okay so upload again and this time we're just going to read it from and let's just check it's still working and it is and now we're going to go a step further so I'm going to disconnect the Arduino. I don't know if you heard that then, that little chime that says it's disconnected. So, yeah, we've disconnected it. We'll give it a few seconds and then we'll plug it in, bring the serial console up straight away, and it should come off with the value that it's just read, which we written to it a minute ago. So let's connect it back up, get the serial console up, and it should say 49. Yeah, it works. So yeah, there's the absolute fundamentals of how these EEPROMs work anyway, or rather how to work them. Um, I know it's not incredibly useful to be able to store the number 49, or in fact any number from 0 to 254 uh, in this thing. But, I mean, if you know the, the fundamentals, you can do anything with it. I mean, for example, if I wanted to, I could uh, store my name, Anthony, in six different cells if I wanted to. Um, now of course to do that you can't actually store letters but what you can do is you'd use the ASCII key code and of course um, there are, it's a standard where certain uh, numbers between 0 to 254 represent certain letters and of course I could just uh, put the corresponding numbers in and I could read them back and yeah I'd go from there there's also simple things like you see over here where it says um, request from address what well, I believe that's one byte that maybe you could expand on that and maybe read 16 bytes I don't know I mean I've not fiddled with that but you can I mean the possibilities are endless with this thing um, anyway so I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching bye